We are at the biological dentist's office, Dr. Scott Chandler here in Park City. We are here to get my cavitations, the cavitations in my jaw cleaned out from when I got my wisdom teeth removed in childhood. So we were here earlier to get, uh, we, we did a cone beam scan and those showed, uh, it's the, kind of the bone density. Anyway, they, they can tell when you have the cavitations and essentially it's, you know, these little pockets that if they don't get cleaned out the first time, then it allows just a nice little space for all sorts of bad bacteria and pathogens to grow in and then leak out to the rest of your body. So uh, yeah, so they had determined that by the cone beam. It's pretty common that when people get uh, their wisdom teeth removed, particularly by a non-biological dentist. Uh, the same sort of thing, though, can, can happen with root canals. Same thing, they don't fill it in properly, they don't clean it out properly when that tooth gets removed, and, and that can also result in a similar infection. Yeah, so I have had these just lingering gut issues that won't go away um, without getting into too much detail. It's just kind of things are all over the map. I've been eating super clean, pristine, non, non pesticide laden diet, very fiber rich for the last at least seven years, ever since Ryder was diagnosed with cancer and we got serious about, um, you know, just healthy eating in general. And uh, gut stuff still hasn't cleared up, which you, know, you talk to most people and talk to most natural practitioners and they say, I mean, really, you know, if you're eating really, really well and clean like that, it should have by now. So I'm hoping this is the cause. It's funny, I was actually doing an interview with Marcus Freudemann on our Anti-Cancer Revolution 2 event and he started talking about how certain, how certain places in the mouth are connected to different parts of your body. Uh, I had had another practitioner when I described what was going on with my gut to him say it sounds like something might be off with your ileum valve, I think it is, in, uh, you know, in your gut. And when I was interviewing Marcus and he was talking about these places in your mouth being connected to different parts of your body, I looked it up and sure enough, the wisdom teeth are connected to the ileum valve in your gut. All right, I think uh, it is about time for the surgery on that note, so let's head on in. Signing my life away. Please don't say that. <laughs> Good. Good to Good. see you. Great. It'll be great. Hi, I'm Teddy. Nice to meet you. Nice to How meet you. you. Good. Well, come on back. We'll start with this first. We, we do the vibrating plate to open up circulation and lymphatic drainage. All right. So we want stuff to be able to move through and out after we clean it out. And we get better blood clots for, your, for the PRF, the platelet-rich fibrin. So that's the purpose. The trick, you stand as wide as you can. Do that for 10 minutes, get you all shaken up. Yeah, that's uh, it you know, loosens everything up. You know, this is the prop, the fix for my gut issues just right here. I still feel the vibration. I, I know, <laughs> that's that. <laughs> People get off of that and they're dizzy. And they think the sedation medicine's working, I haven't even given it to them yet. Yeah, well, <laughs> good. Uh, like I always tell my son to be a tough guy. I know. But it's the station's just for like nerves and yes. stuff, right? It's not yeah. actually pain management. No. Okay. Right. It it can help a little bit if people have really high, you know, pain thresholds, then it, it can help just tone them down so they're not as sensitive to it. Yeah. But we give you the same numbing both ways and, and so right. we keep things from hurting. If you do start to think you're feeling something, then we stop and give you some more. So we're not into the torture thing or wait a minute, I'm almost done here. Just tough it out for a second. We just, that, that's not our way. So let's uh, remind ourselves real quick why we're doing this. This is a lower jawbone on a cadaver. The spot that just looks like something rotten is because it is. It's just like the inside of a rotten log or biting into an apple with a worm in it. It's just full of soft, mushy stuff and that doesn't belong in the body. And that is inside my mouth right now. That's inside oh, right now. That's what we believe. So a um, couple of the big problems with it is, one, it's full of bacteria. We have these bacteria tested all the time, send them to a DNA lab. And we've had them come back as many as 27 different strains of bacteria. 
Um, I knew a guy who had one come back with 50 some strains of bacteria in them. And most of them are in the red. They're like off the charts on, yeah. the, on the count. This, uh, the other big issue is, is just Rantes is this word down here. CCL5 or Rantes is an inflammatory protein. Wherever it lands in the body, it triggers massive inflammation. They've done a lot of work on this in Europe, and there's been over 60,000 papers have been written on it in the last few years. Um, so the scientific world is really looking into this. They've linked it to every cancer, every autoimmune disorder, um, allergies, you name it, it's, they've linked it to this protein. All the things. So it's, it's a bad guy, and in these cavitation sites, instead of 150, which is the normal level, it tends to be over 5,000 in most people. So in Rantes is a protein that gets generated by these pathogens? Yes. And they're not sure exactly why. They find them around root canal teeth, yeah. and they also find them here, and they're starting to branch out and say where else might they come from, but they think one of the main sources where they're originating from is in these jaw and cavitations. Yeah. And so they've, they've got some really good studies in Germany where they're linking it directly to some breast cancers, and, and so there's, it's kind of a hot topic right now. It's a big thing, so that's what we're trying to get out, the bacteria and the critters that trigger inflammation, which yeah. opens a mess everywhere it lands. It does, yeah. Like I was, uh, I was just telling Teddy, it's like when I was on an interview and, and somebody talked about uh, you know different dental meridians being mm -hmm. linked to different places, and uh, I had been talking to a practitioner about like you know, my gut issues, sort of thing, and he was saying it sounds like your ileum valve is messed up in your gut. And I looked it up, and wisdom teeth is indeed connected it's on the, to the other ilium. side of the paper. Yeah, they are connected to the ilium and jejunum. But the biggest thing we find on the wisdom teeth are that they're all connected to the heart. So we actually have a book by the cardiologist, Dr. Levy, where he talks about these cavitations and root canals are the leading cause of most heart attacks and breast cancers, and he goes into that in more detail. But it's on the meridian and so if there's a problem, an infection there, and we, we have seen in the studies as well that these cavitation sites trap a lot of heavy metals. So mercury and lead and all that stuff in the system likes to gather into these empty spots in the bone. The other problem with them is that because it's kind of a hollow, empty hole in the bone, that's right where we hold our cell phones. And since we've gone I to 4G and 5G, <laughs> we're starting to see, yeah, most, most of us do. Um, or have their earbud in right there. Yeah. We're starting to see these grow and become a bigger issue now than we've ever seen them in the past. Wow. And so something about a nice hollow space echoing the signal, and we're not sure, but they're looking at it. And potentially, yeah, because the, the, the heavy metals are sitting in there probably reacting to the, uh, right. to the frequencies. To the EMF yeah. frequencies. And, so they're starting to see for on the same vein that any titanium dental implants are reacting to the frequency. They're heating up about five degrees Celsius when you're on your phone and they're literally cooking the bone around the implant. So we're starting to see a lot of problems with old implants. Oh yeah, and I forgot, we, I completely forgot we were gonna be yanking this guy out too, yep, right? I've got that yeah. metal retainer we wanna get rid of. Some people that are sensitive, even their old retainer from the orthodontics when they were a kid, those a lot of times have nickel in them and, and some other metals that the body doesn't like, but just any metal in the mouth, you know, the saying is if it's metal or dead, it doesn't belong in the head. Yeah. So root canals and anything metal, we try to get out. Well, I'm going to miss it. I like play around with it with my tongue all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You'll miss it. And if, and if, you know, we can make it a clear retainer to, to try to hold those. If you feel like they're starting to move or shift after all these years, then we can make you clear when you just put on at night and wear a few days a week at night and so you can get by without the metal one. Teddy is nodding her head yes. <laughs> Doesn't want me to have crooked teeth. <laughs> it is a good idea. So that's, that's the idea. That's why we're doing it and what we're starting. So when, um, before we start the surgery here, we'll draw some blood. We'll spin it in a centrifuge and separate out the fibrin and the white blood cells. It's called platelet-rich fibrin or PRF. Um, it's a big improvement over the old uh, PRP and some of those things that were done in the past. Um, it's about 10 times concentrated white blood cells, so you fight your own infection with your own natural antibiotic. Um, it does have a tendency to cut pain by about 80% after surgery. So we have a take lot it. of people that take either no pain medication or just a couple of ibuprofen and Tylenol 
even though what we're doing is akin to wisdom teeth extractions, you know, it's pretty similar. Pretty, um, uh, so yeah, you're, it's amazing. I would say it's probably even, is it even more than like a wisdom teeth extraction in the first place, right? Because you're like it, digging around in there. It, it can be. There's, there's less trauma sometimes of physical force of trying to get the teeth out. Yeah. But we're dealing with this big bacteria load now that a lot of times wasn't there, the wisdom teeth. So, um, and, and the risks of the surgery. Um, we'll show on your x-ray here in a minute the the nerve your lower nerve that feeds all your bottom teeth lay right in this area and if we look at what this bacteria has done on this cadaver oh, as it goes down through the bone this is the nerve through here and this nerve is like an electrical wire so if you think of your electrical wire it's usually got a rubber coating around the outside of it well the cavitation bacteria like to eat away that rubber coating yeah and so if we look close we can see little fibers individual fibers on the nerve well that happens sometimes when we're cleaning them out that the ozone and the laser and the ultrasonic vibrations can irritate that nerve and you can have some numbness in your lip usually only lasts a few days or a few weeks we have had one last about three months um, they've all come back but um, that sometimes we saw one the other day that the infection was wrapped all the way around her nerve and it was we just had to kind of walk all around the nerve and it, she has a little bit of numbness for a minute huh. so that's the biggest risk of, stuff. of surgery yeah also the risk is you know like you could show up with the infections later down the road we're talking about a lot of nasty bugs yeah even though we do a lot of things to kill them it's possible so We'll usually send you home with some antibiotics as a backup. It's our last resort. Yeah. Uh, most of our patients don't like them or take them or ever use them. There's a lot of other options to do first with the colloidal silver and the herbal antibiotics and those things. Um, but on a rare occasion, it does come in handy. So we have you prepared for that. We just, if you end up needing to go that route, then you know you've got to take the, a good probiotic and make yeah. sure you save your guts. Yeah. Um. And is that part of the uh, the the supplement protocol that you send me home with? Is that is there are there anti pathogenic yes. things in that? Yes, there are. So the the biggest thing that we do with our supplement protocol after cavitations is that we're trying to drive circulation into the area. So because these areas have notoriously poor circulation, which is good when they're full of bacteria and ranties that not many can get out. Yeah. Um, but when we need them to heal, we need blood flow back into the area. And so we do a lot of things like ginkgo biloba and L-citrulline and um, natokinase that help circulation and blood flow and, and keep things from clotting too, too fast. Um, so that helps with our growth and then we have some antibacterial, some homeopathics that are antibacterial. Um, we have some other vitamins that we'll give, um, but one of the biggest things is vitamin D3. So vitamin D3 with K2 is critical for overall health, but especially for growing bone. And so we usually will go between 20,000 and 30,000 units a day for a time oh, wow. um, to really boost your D3 while you're healing from yeah. this. And um, they've done studies and written books recently of people that have taken up to 100,000 units a day for a year at a time with, with no adverse event yeah. effects. So yeah. um, usually 20 to 30,000 people feel great and it really speeds up the healing. Sounds like so a winner. Most of our patients are already working with a good functional medicine doctor um, that are helping them with detox and with basic supplementation of vitamins and minerals. Um, if, if someone's not, then we'll usually add some things just like a basic multivitamin and some things like that. There are a couple of products that we use a lot um, that most of our patients have when they come in. Um, the Cyto Detox and the Bind. So it's a, a zeolite type product. Two of our really favorites. Good, yep. two of our, good. So you're familiar with it. So we will get you some of that to start with today. We'll have you take some of that before we start. It just helps anything that gets past us. It'll help capture it and, and carry it out. Have you tried their uh, their new True Carbon Cleanse? I have. I just bought it. Just took it home nice. for my wife. Oh, yeah, I still got to yeah. get my hands on that. She doesn't. She doesn't do as well with the bind, and so she, yeah. she's uh, doing better with that one. Oh, nice. So. The one other thing that I didn't mention on the supplements is we do have some of the, the betonite clay, the Redmond clay, yeah. um, in the package. Now you can always eat it and use that as a, as a binder as well, um, but we have you soak your feet, so you make a, just water with a couple of tablespoons of that, 
and you need to do that at least twice in the next 48 hours and it will help pull a lot of those those toxins out and we have people come in with stories about what they saw come out in their water so that that's a, is on the, the protocol I did just buy one of those uh, ionic foot baths. Uh, even better. Which are so? Do you do you do you put stock in those? Because I saw like kind of the debunking videos to where it makes the same color water every time. But then I just talked to this gal who, uh, yeah, I mean, she said it's much darker water when it does come, like when you are, when your feet are in yeah. there. And she gave it to a friend of hers who had like insane lymphedema type stuff going on, and it completely knocked it out just like that. Yeah, they yeah. do. My my. Brother-in-law's a chiropractor, and my sister got patients in and did that all the time for a while, and they saw a huge difference. So this is a cone beam 3D CT scan, basically. Down here in this lower right-hand corner are bone density readings. So because these are so soft, normal bones, see this outside layer of bone here, that reading's over 1,000, it's 1,300. You get into the medullary bone in the middle and it gets into some softer things, a couple hundred. So the numbers drop and that's normal. What we don't want to see are negative numbers. And anything higher than negative 100 is usually when we'll start doing surgery. So we get up into this wisdom tooth area here and there he's 165 already. And we just find some of these darker spots. And what we find when we get in there is that these spots are full of just, it's kind of like jello consistency. Um, really just soft, mushy stuff and oil. So it's kind of gross, but what comes out of there tends to look like melted butter, like it's been in the microwave. And that's where all the bugs and the infection are. Normal bone has a lot of these little white lines that are the kind of the rebar and the concrete. Um, up here we have just a few little teeny tiny ones and they're kind of just floating in space and so we'll, we'll save some of those and that we're over negative 200 in some of these areas. So that's usually how we find those. This is his sinus. The floor of his sinus has got some junk in there and that can come from these, these cavitation bugs going in there. It's the other side and again he has very little bone and, and just a lot of soft stuff in there. Negative 275. Yeah, 275. I think you had some spots over 300 when we looked before. So. Those, those are pretty good ones. We've never opened one up that was um, over 100 that wasn't something there. So even in this lower jaw where the bone is normally a lot denser, um, there we were, we were over 200 around there in some of these areas. So sometimes it's a big surprise when we get in there that it looks a lot worse than we thought it was on the x-ray, but we don't see too many that look better than we thought. Um, it is common for people while we're doing surgery to so we start cleaning these out and all of a sudden they feel like a weight's been lifted off their shoulders we get that comment all the time um, people sometimes their vision will clear up so that they, they'll walk out of here seeing better than they were that happens on occasion um, so the, these just have sometimes some really instantaneous reactions that people feel better and the body tends to shift into parasympathetic mode they're rest and recover mode, their healing mode, right while we're in the middle of surgery. And we'll see someone that's just been nervous all along or something, and then we get a few of these cleaned out, and all of a sudden, it's like they melt into the chair and they go to sleep. And so we have people that aren't, haven't even been sedated that fall asleep all the time during the surgery. Um, so it, it's pretty amazing seeing that change. Um, at the clinic in Switzerland, they've recorded a lot of people's eyes before and after and shown a, a huge change in, in the pupils and in the look of the eyes um, before and after surgery. So it does some pretty amazing stuff to get you into parasympathetic mode. And you've got a, a great vein right there. Okay, we'll poke here. They need to be cleaned out. The ligament has to be all cleaned out. They need to be put in uh, uh, the PRF. Um, we use an ultrasonic surgical instrument to clean out the ligaments of the tooth that's left behind. Um, we just can't, and, and the biggest thing is that there's a cyst um, in most people's wisdom teeth, an eruption cyst that happens, and just clean out all of that tissue out of the inside of the bone. Yeah. Um, and we've even seen some cavitations have started and they don't even have the teeth out yet. 
we're trapping bacteria underneath the tissue and in the cyst material. Oh wow! And we're we have to clean out a lot of this um, cavitation oil and junk, and they haven't even had the tooth extracted yet. Are you ready? I'm ready. And Dr. Chandler, this machine here is what stirs up the yeah, PRF. Yeah, centrifuge. Okay. It's like if you use in the laboratory, they just made these ones special for doing the, the blood work. Um, I've done a lot of work on spin speeds and how fast to spin them and what happens and how long to spin them. And they've, they've really refined this process over the last few years. Give you a little topical anesthetic first. We do um, buffer the anesthetic, so we put a little bit of baking soda in it. That raises the pH because the reason why the shots sting so much is because they're really acidic. Mm -hmm. And so if we do that first, um, it takes a lot of the sting out of the shot. And then it works faster as well. Okay, open real big for me. That allows us to do a couple of things. One, use a lot less anesthetic. Two, is that we can use anesthetic with a lot less epinephrine in it. A lot of people can be sensitive to the epinephrine. It's kind of what your body makes, you know, if you see a bear and get scared about getting a car wreck. It can make you a little shaky. Someone's nervous already and they react to the epinephrine. It's pretty scary at the dentist. We can minimize that by doing some of this stuff. For most people, that means they're low on magnesium. Taking enough magnesium, they'll never have a reaction to the epinephrine. You see a lot of tartar buildup on teeth. That can be usually the body's spilling over extra calcium into the system. If it has extra calcium, it tries to stash it in soft tissues. It'll get the message we need calcium, so it's, it'll steal it from your bones and teeth and gets in the bloodstream. If it doesn't have the magnesium to, to blend with or the phosphorus or boron or some of the things that it needs then it can't be used but it can't go back into bones because it's getting this message to come out of the bones so the body just stashes it and it puts it in places like soft tissue which for a lot of people is kidney stones or tartar buildup on your teeth Right, you got your metal retainer mm -hmm. out. No more antenna in your mouth. If it's metal or dead, it doesn't belong in the head. And the white is what you want? And the white is what we want. Mm -hmm. Dangling off. Right now. So this is the first piece. Get the cotton fuzzy off of it. The first piece of the cavitation bone there. Point it out real quick. These little flaky pieces of bone look kind of like little snowflakes from the side. That's the little fragments of tiny bone. This stuff in the middle is all just the, the fatty osteolysis. So when I mess with that, it all just turns into to grease. This is just oil that's on my, on my fingers. And here's a big batch of it. Kind of just this shiny yellow orange oil kind of looks like melted butter in the microwave so that's a, the beginning of it and then just like ribbons like gold ribbons running through the bone that's kind of the empty hole oh yeah i see it wow oh, go ahead and suck in there this is what's in the empty hole we the want big, you to see the yellow pieces sometimes you can see it so I'm gonna use the ultrasonic and change here real quick. As we start cleaning it out with the ultrasonic, you'll see the Bubble yellow up. white bubbles come out. They're just little tiny, like yellow mm -hmm. bubbles. 
Making little fat bubbles. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh, very. Can you see them coming up? Yeah, yeah. Such. We clean out the main bulk stuff with this ultrasonic. Then we'll laser it. Then we'll ozone it. Then we'll test it. Make sure it tests strong before we put the PRF in. And he actually had today, which we don't see very often, um, real pus coming out. It's usually just this old oil stuff. But right along this gum, oh, there's a good one. Stay back. Can you see that? Oh, can you see that? Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, might be able to grab that. Sometimes we can save these little snowflake looking things. This one's not as pretty as some. Um, grab the laser. So this is a special setting the company made for doing root canal. Mm. So it happens to work really well for this. And it's a little burst of laser energy. It's like a really rapid fire machine gun. And it'll make a little bubble. And then the next pulse will pop the bubble. So you've got thousands of little bubbles popping in the cavitation effect. Destroys the bacteria and, and shakes the chunks out of the corners. And then next step, we'll use ozone. We use a pretty high concentration of ozone. So we'll tell him just to not take a big breath if he smells it. It can pick up your lungs. No, not that you can't breathe, here, but, but still try to take a big whiff. We have a nook and crannies and around the nerve where we can't physically get to. This will get a lot of it. And now at this point, when we think we've got it cleaned out, then we then we test it. Then I'll I'll muscle test it and see um, how well it tests. If it doesn't test strong, then we can ask: Is it on the outside, the inside, the back, the front? We can find out where we might have missed something. And this is what Dr. Klingart's doing with his automatic response technique. They use a little glass rod and they stick it in there, connected to the other end is that piece of bone that we took out in the beginning. Mm. If it resonates with that piece of bone, then there's still bad stuff in there. Mm. So this tested that it was clean and that the power was on, but I could sense that there were still some pieces, some shrapnel inside there basically. It was disinfected, but I'd rather not have loose pieces of stuff in there that could potentially cause a problem with the healing. Now we'll take those clots that we made earlier and now we've smashed them flat. And we'll put them inside these areas. They kind of look like a rubber band consistency. This yellow white blood cells basically. We keep a little bit of the red blood cells. That's where a lot of the stem cells are, is right at that layer. But because it's supercharged clotting factors, the bleeding stops really soon after we put these in. What happens is a lot of times the cyst that's around wisdom teeth, most of them are enveloped in a water balloon. Um, kind of looks like a water balloon, it's a big cyst. And we pop the cyst and take the tooth out. But if we don't, if we don't get all that broken balloon remnants out of the bone when the tooth is extracted, and that's one of the major causes for the cavitations. So that tissue just sits inside the middle of the bone and just rocks in there basically. Um, and it'll form some really tough scar tissue. It almost shows up like bone on the x-ray. It's so hard sometimes. People will have for years where the area back there will swell up and go down and swell up and go down and the roof the tender and then go away. So this is a really pretty one. You wow. can see the snowflakes and the yellow. That kind of bone marrow oil in between. That's a beautiful sample. Mm -hmm. You can see the oil shining on top. There's some good ones. This is 
Propane. Propane is like hitting the reset button on the body. It's like rebooting your computer after your Windows update. We just did a major Windows update. Now we're telling it to reboot. Get me on a pretty soft diet for uh, at least a few days. Yeah. No Doritos, no seeds like raspberry seeds, chia seeds, anything like that. Um, smoothies and, and um, you know, bone broths and that kind of stuff are great. You, you can't eat on all the front teeth and everything's stitched up pretty tight so it's hard to get stuff inside. Except for little seeds and corn chips and you know just keep things pretty soft and, and try to keep it to the front. Mm -hmm. um, rinse out good after you eat. The first day like tonight, don't want you to go home and, and rinse real vigorously like with the salt water because you can disturb the blood clots and mm -hmm. um, you can rinse gently, especially after you eat. But starting tomorrow, you want to rinse a couple of times a day, especially after eating with a, with a good salt water. Mm -hmm. We'll also give you a, a mouthwash, an herbal mouthwash that's like a hydrogen peroxide base. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, do you have some of the ozone oil? Because you can alternate with ozone oil as well. That helps. Sometimes we'll use that instead of the peroxide one. Um, peroxide one tastes better. Um, so if you alternate that with warm salt water, things are going to feel pretty good. Um, just a couple of ibuprofen and Tylenol is, is usually fine. You want to try to get some down before the numbing totally wears off. The other thing to watch out for is if the numbing doesn't wake up, uh, when everything else wakes up and later tonight, you still got part of your lip that's numb or tingly. Mm -hmm. Then let me know. There's some other stuff that I can do, um, but that's fairly common that we'll see some, some temporary numbness because we just look all around the nerve down there, and it eats away the covering of that nerve with the bacteria. So that's the danger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You made it. It's a bit of a process. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to be a little sedated for that, but um, there are quite a few who don't and do just fine. Yeah. It's not terribly traumatic. It's just a lot of work. Yeah. Was it fine? Now it's really common for us to do clean out four cavitations and take out multiple root canal teeth and put in implants all on the same day. Wow. So we had one a week or so ago that was 10 hours. Um, but the body does the very best if we can get all of the interferences out at the same time. Yeah. So even though it seems long and they're really tired, the next day they feel great. We've had several that don't even take Tylenol, which is just crazy. Take out five teeth and do four cavitations and they say they have no pain. Most people have a little, a little bit of pain. And, um, but like I said, it's just treat it how you need to depending on how you're feeling. But don't try to really tough it out if something's hurting. Take some stuff. Now, there's some really good CBD oil. Um, if you don't have any, we, we've got some good yeah, stuff. Yeah, a lot of that. You've got all that stuff. So, using that, um, the homeopathics, um, those type of things will all be helpful. The, the recap of what we did cleaning out these cavitations, we just open up the top of the bone. It's like a little trap door into your attic. We go in there, we clean out everything that's basically just mush. There's very little solid bone in there. It's mostly like cottage cheese kind of consistency. We clean all that out, laser, ozone, then we put the platelet rich fibrin uh, made out of your blood clots. We put that in there, stitch it all in, and things just heal up great. So that's the. I think the right, you really, uh, the rush to relax. You feel it, don't you? I think so, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people feel it. We get that comment that. The most common one is people feel like a weight's been lifted off their shoulders. I don't know if it's kind of done. Um, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it's yeah. kind of just that happy, relaxed yeah. you know, feeling is, is what happens. So you have to be careful if you're driving because you can get really sleepy on the way home. Yeah. So let the cameraman drive. Mm -hmm. The cameraman. <laughs> so I'll send you home with this, this uh, cooling mask. So it runs like a radiator around your, your face. You put the uh -huh. mask on, put some distilled water in it. It keeps it at just the perfect temperature. You feel like, oh, I, that should be colder, I want it colder, but it's not. So it's it's set just where it's supposed to be. Yeah. And you can even sleep with it if you want, but the, the more time you spend with it, the first 48 hours, the less pain and swelling you're gonna have. 
Alright. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Your face is kind of swollen. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> After you, tiger. <laughs> <laughs>